so I'm really familiar with the area. But the reason we're at Harvard today is to talk about organic lawn care. And to do that, we're going to meet up with Wayne Carbone, the head groundsman for Harvard. Good morning, Wayne. Hey, Roger. How you doing? Well, you got a lot of grass to take care of here. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. We have about 80 acres throughout the campus. Now, you're not watering today. No, we're not. What we're doing here is we're applying a liquid biological amendment. It's a compost tea. So compost we're adding tea. biology to our soil. Now, that takes the place of the conventional chemical program? Yes, it does. About a year and a half ago, we transitioned to a fully organic program. We've always been reducing our, our dependency is on chemicals. But this gave us the opportunity to eliminate all synthetic fertilizers and all harmful chemicals. This compost tea is the rage right now. Now, I assume you make your own here? Yes, we do. Well, let's take yeah, a look. Sure, it's great. Well, Roger, you can't have great compost tea without great compost. This is your compost? Yeah, this is our compost. I mean, in the past, we used to truck 500 tons of organic waste, landscape waste, off campus to another a compost facility. But now what we do is we compost it ourselves. What we do here is this is everything from grass clippings to herbaceous perennials to, to wood, woody plant prunings. We'll add some vegetable waste and some coffee grounds as our nitrogen source as we're developing different fungal or bacterial mixes. But it's, it's, it's a great thing, even for the homeowner. What a, yeah, for the homeowner, rather than sticking all their yard waste in a plastic bag, sending it to a landfill, they can add it and make their own compost. Exactly, and the beautiful part about this is you're utilizing your landscape waste, which is coming from your landscape, and you're introducing it to your landscape. So what's our next step? Our next step is to add this compost into a tea bag. This is Karen Klein, and what he's going to do is he's going to add a, a compost to the tea bag, which we're going to put into our compost tea brewer. So the tea bag is a 400 micron mesh. And what Karen's doing here is he's securing it to this coupling unit, which we're going to add to the compost tea brewer. All right, let's drop it in. Well, Roger, this is our commercial grade compost tea brewer. We have a capacity of about 250 gallons of compost tea that we can brew right here. What Karen has right here is our compost tea bag and, and its fiber. What we're going to do is add this into the brewer. Connect it there to the coupling. And this pump is adding air to the system. Yeah, that, that's important, Roger, because what we're trying to do is coax the beneficial organisms. If we didn't add air to the system, we'd be, we'd be developing an anaerobic tea, which is basically just brown mud. The most important part of our compost tea is our compost, using a, a quality compost. But we also add food sources to coax specific biology um, for our deficiencies within our soils. For instance, Karen over there, he's adding some kelp. Which is just ground up seaweed. Exactly. And what we're going to do is we'll add that to the mix. And then we'll add some fish hydrolysate, which ground is basically up fish. ground up fish. Exactly. Now, what is the purpose of adding all these individual things? Well, with, with these specific food sources, um, what we're doing is we're trying to coax bacterial activity within this compost tea. And now our, our final ingredient with this mix is a, a molasses. 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 The, the, um, the bacteria love it. So you can actually specify your mix. Exactly. Exactly. You can, we can also, uh, this is a bacterial mix where we're trying to coax the bacterial activity. You can add humic acid also. There's different mixes in our website which will help you determine. You can know, make any sort of microbrew you want. Huh? Exactly, depending on the deficiencies of your landscape. And how long does it have to churn like this? Depending on the brew, a bacterial mix usually um, takes about 18 to 24 hours. A fungal mix takes up to 48 hours of actual brew time. Well, still, that's a pretty quick turnover. Yeah, it is. It's quick turnover. And this gets loaded on the truck? This gets loaded on the truck, and we can brew it right on site. We'll, we'll extract this into our sprayers and reintroduce it to the landscape. Well, Roger, let me show you some of the benefits that we've seen in our organic program. What we've done here is we've taken two cores. One from our organically maintained property here at Harvard Yard, which is 16 acres of landscape. And this is a core taken from one of our conventionally maintained landscapes. And as you can see, these roots in the organic core are up to 8 to 10 inches deep. And that's great because most lawns I see, it's a 3 to 4 inch layer. That 8 to 10 inch root zone, that really holds water and stops this grass from drying out. Exactly. When we started this project, we had a, comp a defined compaction layer three to four inches deep. And by breaking through that compaction layer, we were able to get air down deep into those roots and moisture. And nutrients. Exactly. And here's your now, results. These are the results. This is Harvard Yard. 
What we've done is we've been able to minimize our water needs. Last year alone, we, we estimate that we saved almost 2 million gallons of water maintaining this property. Um, by using our organic methods, we're able to mow the lawn less because the, the grasses and the plants are growing naturally and we're not putting them on steroids and synthetic fertilizers and things like that. And no chemicals? No chemicals at all. Well, thanks for your inspiration. And